on September 1st, 2001, um, I had just turned 18 and started my freshman year um, in college. And 10 days later, 9-11 happened. Um, I remember when the build, the towers were hit, um, we were sitting in the lounge area in the dorms and um, all of us, all the freshmen um, kids who lived on my floor, we were all huddled together around this TV and watching um, the news unfold. And none of us had ever really, you know, seen something like that. And so it was really surreal and uh, very confusing. Um, we didn't really know what was going on, um, why it was happening. And I don't think any of us realized that that was the beginning of a different kind of world. Um, that in those hours, um, everything that we had known, the world that, the way that we had known the world, um, it had changed. Four days after 9-11, a sick man was shot and killed in Arizona uh, because he had a beard and a turban. This was really disturbing and marked the beginning of about probably over 300 incidents of hate crimes against sick Americans. Um, that were reported, you know, months after 9-11. Um, these included beatings and killings of Sikh Americans, um, burning of Sikh temples, um, and harassment of Sikh individuals on the streets. Uh, this was a really scary time for my family because my family also practiced Sikhism. Um, the reality of it all actually hit home when uh, one day when my mom was working, um, she worked at a gas station that my parents own and um, while she was working um, a man came in and this man comes up to her and starts shouting at her and um, tells her uh, starts t calling her a terrorist and telling her to go home um, and if she doesn't go home to her country that he will kill her and uh, my mom responds by saying in her broken English that she's not the terrorist, that he is, and that he should go home because he's the one with the beard and he's the one making these threats to her. Um, and I think he was just taken aback by my mom's response and um, walked out of the gas station. And so like minutes later, my mom calls me and she tells me, you know, the details of what had happened and I just couldn't believe it. I, um, you know, these were stories that we were hearing in the community from other people, but I couldn't hear that this had happened to my own mother. And um, my parents were really scared for a while. They actually, I remember they bought us those um, American sticker flags to put in our cars and to put on, you know, my my dorm room door, you know, to show that I, we were patriotic or, or American. And, um, and I, you know, I took the flag because my, I wanted my parents to feel at ease and I didn't want them to worry about me because I wasn't living at home. But at the same time, um, you know, it really made me feel, uh, this um, anger at being seen as not being American or having to prove that we were American. And the funny thing is that I was actually in the U.S. Army uh, Reserves at that time. So I um, was in the military and, you know, a few years later after this, I would actually be deployed and uh, would spend a year in Baghdad. But... But, you know, this fear that ignorant people, you don't really know what ignorant people are capable of. And this climate of fear that, that was all around after 9-11 um, really was, uh, you know, it still gives me goosebumps to this day. Um, I, I was actually just home and I asked my mom if I could interview her about what, what her experience with this and she actually told me no, she didn't want to talk about it because, you know, it's in the past and 
there's there's no point you know what's the point you know we're fine our family's fine let's not talk about it and you know I try to convey to her that it's important to tell this story so people understand um how you know what was people understand and remember what what was going on in our country but my mom um I think she is still afraid of stirring you know, she doesn't want to, she's like, she asked me if this was going to go online, if I recorded her, I said yes, and so she said no, she didn't want to publicly tell her story because she was still afraid, and she, she said that, what if they kick us out of this country, and I told her, mom, you're a citizen, they're not going to kick you out, but I think that fear still continues in this way where, where because of the color of your skin or your culture or your religion you are not american enough and that anything can happen to you at any moment out of the ignorance of people and so i i wanted to share this experience because i think it's our moral obligation to preserve these stories um so that the future generations you know have a first-hand account of our experiences and they understand how this event changed who we were and and how we res and learn how we responded collectively in times of crisis. Um, and I, I the this project that Ryan is doing is incredible, and I, I hope this project, you know, makes us all reflect and think about the ways that the world has changed and where we're headed. You know, post nine eleven, um, so much of our uh, privacy and freedom has been compromised in the name of um, security, national security, and um, and I think there are some really important questions to raise. Um, the, the climate of fear is not over, you know, not just for my mom, but for the larger American population and and I think we really need to reassess our experience and talk about our experience so it's not this scary thing in in our consciousness so that we can put it out there. Let's talk about how 9-11 scared the shit out of us and then let's talk about what that fear means and then how much are we willing to give up in the name of that fear. <laughs>